Okay, so these are my 10 steps on how to perform an open hysterectomy. The first step is to um, gain access to the pelvic area, and that's normally done by um, making a skin incision either in a P fan and, fan and steel manner, which is a transverse incision as shown in the first picture, about two centimeters above the pubic symphysis, or uh, a midline incision extending from the umbilicus to the pubic symphysis. Um, now this can also be extended above the umbilicus, say if the uterus was large. You then want to um, hold all the bowel away um, of the pelvis, as this will now be obstructing your view in of the of the uterus. Um, so you normally do that by using two large abdominal packs and a Golliger retractor, which um, self retrains and holds hold the bowel out of your um, uh, access area for you. You then use two Spencer valves, um, apply it just where this orange arrow is um, on both sides, which helps you to maneuver the uterus um, and hold the uterus up um, just so you can um, identify the important structures and, 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 and do the procedure. The second step now is to identify the round ligament, which is the ligament that's shown in the picture here with a blue arrow. Normally, you would hold on to this ligament by either using a Spencer Wells or a Roberts. After uh, holding on to it, you then use something like the pencilet, which is which which is something we will which will diathermize and cut the tissue for you. Um, and then you want to get into, into this important uh, part of your surgery, which is where you identify all the structures. The third step is to identify the ureter. Now, once you have gained entry into the round ligament and you've pushed all the soft tissues away using a Russian forceps, you will then um, be able to see the external iliac vein, external iliac artery, and as you go cranially on the external iliac artery, you will see the ureter um, passing up there. Once you've identified the ureter, it's then easier for you to clamp the IP ligament um, and carry on with your surgery. So the fourth step then is to clamp and cut the um, IP ligament, which is just the ligament that I've shown you um, here in this picture with with a, with a, with a line. Um, normally, this is done by creating a little window in the peritoneum and then applying a lesser curved zeppelin along with the Roberts um, to cut and suture this very important structure, which has got a lot of vasculature in it. So normally, um, clinicians would uh, first tie the IP ligament and then suture it with a Vicro. You then want to do this on both sides um, of, 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 your, of the uterus um, so you can have you can mobilize the uterus. The fifth step is then to mobilize and dissect the bladder. Now this is usually done uh, with the help of your Debeke's forceps to um, hold the uh, bladder tissue up and then using diathermy, um, you then cut away the tissues uh, by identifying the right planes and then just helping to mobilize the bladder lower um, on, on, on the cervix so you're not um, cutting into the bladder tissue when you're applying your clamps um, with the zaplins. The sixth step is then to um, uh, clamp and cut the uterine artery, which as I've shown in this picture, in the arrow, you want to apply this lesser curved zeppelin in, in sort of a horizontal manner, um, sliding it right against the cervical tissue, so you you get you get hold of all the uterine vessels and any small vessels that may exist in that area. Once you've done that, you then apply a Roberts just above it for backflow. Um, now cut this with either a Mayo scissors or a Nelson scissors or some sort of heavy scissors, and then you suture this pedicle with the vice. The seventh step then is to um, cut the cervical ligaments. Now this is usually done with a straight zeppelin. Now that's applied um, in in the same parallel manner that I've shown you, um, that shown the arrow on this picture. Um, this will then help you to release the cervix um, from the cervical ligaments, which allows the cervix to to mobilize even more. Um, this is again done with, uh, again, you would cut this with some sort of heavy scissors like Nelson's and Mayo's and then suture it with a Vicro. 
Now, opening the vagina is the eighth step, which is basically done by two little woods, um, which are applied onto the vaginal tissue. Um, you know, and then you make a little cut with a, with a knife into the vagina. Once the vaginal tissue has been opened, you then want to apply um, greater curved saplins on both sides um, to hold the vaginal tissues. This will then allow you to cut the, all the cervical tissue away. And this is your specimen removed of uterus, um, cervix, both tubes and both ovaries. Your job next is to suture the vaginal vault. This is the ninth step of the operation. This is normally done with a vicro, um, and most people would do the two vaginal angles first and then suture the, uh, the, the middle of the vault with either a continuous stitch or an interrupted stitch with vicro. This is your hysterectomy basically done. Um, you then want to identify any uh, planes of bleeding or any uh, and, and, and try and control the bleeding. Um, this may require some extra stitches or a bit of diathermy. Most people would at, the, at this point then would give it give the pelvis a washout uh, with a bit of saline and, 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 and sucking all the fluid away um, to be able to identify any uh, points of bleeding. Um, now, for the patient, you um, can also consider doing tap blocks, um, which give really good pain relief post-op for the patient. Now, the tenth and the final step is basically closing um, your incision. So, usually done by closing the sheath with a PDS or a Vicro, and then the skin with staples, monocryl or Vicro repeat based on um, the patient factors, the reason for your uh, hysterectomy, how straightforward your procedure was, so forth. You also want to consider giving the patient some VTE prophylaxis, which is basically venous thromboembolism prophylaxis. So your patients should really have TEDs and Flotrons on during surgery, but you also want to give them something like uh, a daltiparin or clexane um, to um, stop them from developing any, uh, any, any to at least prevent uh, or reduce the risk of any venous thromboembolism. You also um, would have catheterized your patient, so you want to um, consider taking the catheter out once the patient is mobile, um, likely on day two. Um, you also want to consider doing some blood tests like the full blood count and urea and electrolytes. You also want to consider prescribing some analgesia and laxatives for the patients. Now, because most analgesias require um, and, and, and have things like codeine in it or opioids, um, it's likely that your patients may become constipated. So prescribing some laxatives with this is a very good idea. Now, thank you so much for listening. Now, this was sort of like a beginner's guide to um, doing a hysterectomy. Now, when I was learning to do hysterectomies, I wish somebody had um, gone through these steps with me uh, in, a in a simplified manner like this. Um, so, so just so you know in your head before you go to theatre what steps uh, will, are needed and what to look out for. Um, but unfortunately, I didn't find any material like this, which is why I'm doing this video. Now, if you found this video useful, then please do give it a, a thumbs up and, and subscribe to my channel um, so you can keep updated with more content that I share.